Hello and welcome to ISC 2022. I'm Nadira Tudor. And I'm Rosie Tapner. You're watching Rise Live, the official TV channel of ISC 2022. ISC today opened its doors at its new home here in Barcelona. Together, Nadira and I will be showing you all that's on offer at ISC this year. We will be speaking to the people who are making the news, exploring the exhibition and taking you behind the scenes. And we'll be meeting keynote speakers, discussing the state of the industry and seeing the latest cutting edge technology. It's going to be an incredible week. You're watching Rise Live, the official TV channel of ISC 2022. We're here at the Gran Via Fira de Barcelona with the latest news and analysis on the first day of ISC 2022. We have a packed programme for you today. We pick out the digital signage highlights from around the halls. I quiz the key speakers in the Smart Building Conference. And we witness the amazing iRise projection display in the Plaza de España. All that's to come. First up, let's hear from ISC Managing Director Mike Blackman. Mike told me earlier that they've had huge support from all levels of government and industry to make this week a success and explained how the ISC has been welcomed by Barcelona. We are so pleased to be here in this city. Um, after the whole waiting we've been doing, uh, coming here to Barcelona, having this date in May is phenomenal. If we talk about during the pandemic, and we know it, it was obviously a very difficult time for events like this, what was that like then and, and what's it like now post-pandemic? So for ISE during the pandemic, uh, you know, obviously we're in the live events business and having a shutdown for everything to do with conferences, exhibitions, concerts, you name it, uh, we, like many of our customers uh, in this sector, suffered. Um, we tried to do some uh, hybrid events, um, and I think we were able to satisfy some uh, uh, people who would have attended by being part of that. But it's very different to being at in-person events, you know, touching, feeling. We're in a business where you need to see and hear. Mike, I'd like to talk about impact, and there are different ways that we can look at that. So let's start with the impact on Barcelona, the city itself? UFI, the Union of Fire Internationals, and that's the global organization for exhibition organizers. They have a calculation on what impact uh, an exhibition brings to the cities. And exhibitions are always a major catalyst for any trade. And on their calculations, they think that uh, um, ISE will probably bring in something like 250 million euros into the city in the days we're here now. And as we grow, we would anticipate that to grow to about half a billion euros by 2026. And then the AV industry uh, growing, um, they and Victor anticipates that the industry will be worth more than $329 billion by 2026. And in Spain, we're seeing an average growth of between six, six and seven percent uh, annual. Uh, GDP. Let's look at the actual impact on the audiovisual industry now. We believe that the way this industry will grow uh, makes a huge future for us. This market alone will be worth about three billion dollars by 2026. So that's you know where it's going. Immediate effect, we already know of three companies who set up their operations here in Barcelona as a result of ISE moving here and we anticipate there'll be many more. What I'd like to know now is what can the visitors walk away with after this experience? ISE is about everything to do with AV and AV touches all parts of our lives. And that means from the residential solutions that uh, you'll see in your home right up to uh, what you have at work, what you might experience in a hotel meeting space or a hotel room, uh, uh, even to football stadiums. Um, you see in more and more um, shopping uh, retail chains uh, using AV to enhance the experience for their customers. And that's the sort of technology you will see here at ISE. These are the sort of solutions that you'll find all over the show floor. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll be showcasing all of that technology and the solutions that Mike mentioned on Rise Live over the next few days. The first day has definitely lived up to the hype. Let's now get the views from some of the more than 800 companies exhibiting here in Barcelona.
Sure is a uh, microphone and audio manufacturer that's been in business for 97 years, based out of Chicago, Illinois, and we're thrilled to be here at ISE. We keep coming up with new ideas uh, by listening to our customers first and foremost. Also, we just have a great uh, group of engineers that are absolutely into audio and uh, looking forward to the next innovation and the next uh, great thing that we can accomplish. New products that we're launching here, uh, probably the flagship will be the MXA 920, which is the new version of the MXA 910, uh, which actually improves greatly in the performance of the MXA 910, which is an industry-leading ceiling array microphone. Our tagline is sound extraordinary, um, and I think that encompasses a lot of uh, what makes this company so great. Uh, first and foremost, from the innovation uh, within our products, the way that our products uh, sound and perform. And, and lastly, I think our, our associates really make the difference in the industry and what makes this company extraordinary. The past two years have changed a lot of things in the, in the industry. And um, in the corporate market, for instance, I see there is less demand for conference centers and meeting room technology, but of course, increasing demand for hybrid meeting and uh, blended spaces. And this is what a technology provider like us um, is providing them to the market, the tools that they need to create these uh, hybrid and blended environments. There is a new form of entertainment at the moment evolving with location-based entertainment. So people are looking for experiences in their near proximity instead of traveling afar. And we see immersive experiences, projection rooms, this kind of uh, yeah, entertainment uh, facilities really having developed into a strong trend. ISE is a one-stop shopping for all the technology that you need wherever you are in a meeting room environment, in a classroom, in entertainment or museum. Um, in one or two days you can find all the technologies that you need um, for your projects in whatever vertical market you're working in. As Sound United we have a full suite of high-end uh, audio solutions of renowned brands. The future for us in home entertainment sits much more into customized solutions. So where we see that people are more and more looking for designs that fits their home and that fits their own uh, environment. And we work a lot with architects and designers and interior designers to see what, is it, what are their needs. And one of the things we're seeing is that there's much more uh, dynamic needs than aesthetic needs. Which, and what we mean with that is that people want where they go, they want the music to be there. And things can change and they want to adapt it along with them. So next to the wired solutions, we see a lot more wireless solutions come into play. And there we have, with Denon Home, with Bowers and Wilkins Formation, we have solutions that are wireless and that are flexible, can be adapted and be, can be built in next to your, let's say, built-in solution. So that is the future. We have three verticals, uh, Lysar, Fantech and WordPro, are three different divisions of products. And we are showing two, Fantech and Lysar, are mainly for live events. Uh, Lysar are lighting control systems and Fantech is rigging and staging factory that we run since 2014. I still believe that the trade shows are very important to close business, to close relationships. It's not only the video calls help during the pandemic, but we need this uh, human touch again. It's our biggest event in, in our company because it was in Europe. Now it's even better because it's being in Spain and also because all the integrators, live events industry, so it's one show that you can cover almost all the customers. So it's very exciting, very exciting moments. I'm Nadira Tudor, and you're watching Rise Live, the official TV channel of ISC 2022. You can watch us at any time on digital.isceurope.org. All the individual videos and more can be individually played and downloaded from the site. You can also access us through the ISC app, which has all the information about what's going on here at ISC 2022 in Barcelona. Here's a roundup of the news on Tuesday. On day one, VIPs have already been on a tour around ISC. Among them was president of the Generalitat de Catalunya, the mayor of Barcelona and the mayor of Hospitalet de Llobregat. We're expecting to see lots more VIPs throughout the week, so keep an eye out. All week in the AV Experience Zone, Avixa is presenting the most cutting-edge AV solutions and latest trends within the industry. This is a highly unique event presented in Spanish. We're here at the AV Experience Zone. Uh, it will be four days in a row. There will be many, many sessions going on. Sessions for different verticals, corporate, retail, hospitality, education. 
and we also have uh, special sessions for AV technicians. And basically it's a project that we did to present the AV integrators in Spain. So we'll have more or less, I think, about 50 speakers coming on the stage. Most of the sessions are in Spanish, but we also have several sessions in English. We welcome you all to come and visit and spend some time with us. The Managing Director of ISC, Mike Blackman, has received the Welcome Talent Honor Award from the Impulso Talentum Foundation, which organizes the Talent and Knowledge Congress. The award represents his contribution to the innovation sector and his commitment to make Barcelona the epicenter of the audiovisual industry. How do you fancy a 400-kilometer bike ride along the Mediterranean coast? Well, 10 industry professionals have just done that. Let's find out why. Many people in the life events industry that work behind the scenes, they have no income during the pandemic because they, they have no possibility to work. So finally, uh, they have mortgages to pay, they have a lot of things to pay, and they don't have, they don't have that income. So we, we want to help raise in funds for two charities, AAA in Spain and Backup in the UK, because this is about raise awareness, but also about raise funds. Um, in, this, in this ride, for example, we raise about 6,000 euros, which is not much if you can see, but next year I'm sure we can raise much more because we will have more time to, to get more people involved. A 19 metre dome and 7.6 flying dome in Hall 5 is home to a series of impressive and immersive presentations, panels and events. Making its debut in Hall 6 is the Digital Signage Boulevard, a great way to experience state-of-the-art digital signage in action. In an easy-to-navigate area in Congress Square, in the heart of ISE, is the Discovery Zone, a launch pad for first-time ISE exhibitors, from young, groundbreaking companies to prestigious PLCs. The Women in Live Music Lounge in Hall 7, supporting women and informing men, encourages more women to visit the show and to join the AV industry. ISC is a joint venture partnership between Avixa and Cedia. Avixa is the Audiovisual and Integrated Experience Association. Cedia is the Global Trade Association for the home technology industry. Daryl Friedman took up his post as Cedia's Global President and CEO last November. I spoke to him earlier about Cedia's role at the ISC. Daryl, you started the job last November, a very short period of time. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling so positively about everything. I, I joined, I've been on the job about five months now, and I've had an opportunity to go really around the world and talk to CDA members from London and New York and Los Angeles, Southern California, and I just, uh, I'm just optimistic about the potential of the home residential system. So I'm really looking forward to digging into the job. And it's your first opportunity to be at a large event like this. Well, the exciting part is I'm gonna to get to meet hopefully hundreds of people in the next few days. I've had the opportunity to travel and, and meet and talk individually with members, but this is a way to do it in mass. So I'll be here at this booth every day at five, hoping to meet our members and really learning from them how Cedia can provide value and even do better than the work we're doing today. So if we talk about Cedia's involvement in the show, what is it? Well, here it's about evangelizing the home residential market for the public and for other, other brands and trades. We wanna make sure that the residential market at ISC is very prominent and make sure that our educational aspects are also taken um, by many of the technicians who want to learn. And we're offering for the first time our CIT and IST uh, exams here. And CIT is now uh, internationally accredited, so we're very proud of that. It's the good housekeeping or the good smart housekeeping seal of approval on any technician in the industry. So what are we living in now post-pandemic? Well, I think the pandemic has, has shown a light on the importance of the home. The home has become our hub for everything over the past two years for education, for wellness, for entertainment, for your office, your, your kids learning. And so I think what our integrators and our CDM members have done is they've taken this opportunity to show we can make that home a fantastic place for you to spend as much of the time as you want there and really make it productive and use the technology to make people's lives better. So we're talking about making people's lives better. I want to talk about the advocacy work that you do. Oh, I'm glad you asked that. The advocacy work, especially the government relations work we do around the world, really is involved with making sure the integrator, him, him or herself, can do the work in their business environment, in the regulatory environment that really kind of dictates how they can operate. 
We're working with policymakers to make sure they understand the integrator, this is a trade like any other trade. They need to be protected, they need to have regulatory and business environments that they can work in effectively. We're back on the show floor with digital signage highlights. But first, the Control Room Summit took place this morning, one of seven major conferences hosted in Barcelona by ISC 2022. The summit asked, how do you design a new critical control room? Now, Avixa is the co-owner with Cedia of ISC. This week, the association presents a diverse program of events and panels aimed at AV professionals from around the world. All the information can be found on the ISC website at ISCEurope.com. You'll also find it all on the ISC app. To tell us more is Sarah Joyce, Chief Global Officer of Avixa, talking about all the highlights over the next few days. Sarah, what can we expect? What we're so excited to be able to bring back is a full program of content. So starting with our experience zone, uh, which is Spanish language content for all four days of the show, focused on uh, systems integrators and uh, end users, targeting core markets of hospitality, retail, corporate education, uh, very much focused around our core solutions as well. We've got a full packed content uh, program. We have our council sessions. We have the Avixa Diversity Council panel session, brought back after a very successful in 2020. We have the Avixa Women's Council as well. Two vibrant groups, our largest councils globally. I'd like to pick up on the diversity panel. Why do we need one? Very much our mission is to be a hub for the community and a catalyst for the AV industry. And by doing that, it's about being inclusive and bringing everybody together. I was very proud to host the first Women's Council session in ISE back in 2014. And that has grown around the world to over 50 groups worldwide. Uh, the Diversity Council brings together all areas of representation and inclusion. Sarah, there's so much on offer. First time ever. We've been able to bring CTS testing here with Pearson View. Uh, we've also got CTS prep classes and talks going on during the week, uh, covering in English, uh, in Spanish, and in German for everybody. Testing can take place as well in those languages. So it, we're really back. <laughs> You're watching Rise Live, the official TV channel of ISC 2022. There are over 800 exhibitors here, set over six technology zones and five halls of the Grand Via. Florian Rotberg, the managing director of Invidis Consulting and the co-chair of the Digital Signage Summit, shows Rosi Tapner his personal highlights from the show floor. This is Samsung. Florian, talk me through this. It's ridiculous. It is, it is. It's 8K, it's 0.6 millimeter. It's probably the best quality LED you find here at ISC. It's absolutely mesmerizing, and I'm so excited to see what else Samsung are bringing out this year. Let's go and have a look. Absolutely, let's go. Let's go. There's been a huge change here with sustainability. Can you talk us through it? The world really has changed in the, in the pandemic, during the pandemic. In the past, it was always about the best picture quality, and we've seen some great stuff here at ISE. But it's really about, you know, how can you be more sustainable? And um, digital signage and LED and LCD and in particular, it's all about operations. 80% of the CO2 is produced during the five or seven years the products are being used, you know, it's basically about power consumption. So it's really about how can you reduce power consumption? And there are various ways. Obviously, if you buy new components, you know, like they have here at Samsung, you know, you can buy new stuff which uses less power, but um, you can also reduce existing stuff, which is obviously more sustainable, you know, in turning them off completely at night and not using standby. We all use our TVs on standby. We never turn them off, remotely, but it makes a huge difference. And, you know, when you have a big screen in a shop, you know, the shop is closed for 12 hours or 14 hours, yeah. but usually the stuff is running on standby. So we're here, we've just seen Samsung. Yeah. Where are we going next? Where are you now taking me? Now let's go to NEC, Shop NEC. Yeah. And we will see something about hybrid, hybrid working. Okay. Because the world has changed in the pandemic and we need to find new solutions for that. So Florian, we're now at Sharp NEC. Tell us about the company. 
Yeah, there's a big challenge, you know, which came up during the pandemic. It's really about working at home and working in the office, but now we have the hybrid step challenge. So we have some people who are in the meeting room and you have this non-verbal communication between everyone in the meeting room and then you have the poor guys who are in the home office or the lucky guys, depending <laughs> on where you are. And it's really about how can you combine that. So you have your typical Teams user interface here with the chat there, but what's really different are, you know, everyone in the call, you know, being at home or in the meeting room, you know, is, is on camera. Is this the future? It, it is. It, it's part of the future, obviously. You still will have your computer at home. People will still work two or three days from home. But it's really about combining both, you know, having this hybrid thing. For the industry, it's a new challenge. OK, so we're here in Hall 6 at Ameria. And Florian, you had told me about after the last couple of years, people are still quite scared of touching things. And this is the future. Well, it's, it's an alternative to touch. It's gesture tracking. So it's really about you know how you can interact with screens without, with, without touching them. And that's what many people are still worried about. So it's really it's a nice alternative. And it's fun. It's gamification. Can I try? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, you know Amazon Go, right? Yeah. You go in a store and you leave the store without paying because it's all full of sensors. It's hundreds of sensors everywhere you go. And the biggest challenge for a retailer in, gen in all stores is they know what they sell, but they don't know about why they don't sell certain products. So it's about really they want to understand, you know, how do consumers move through the store? How do they interact with certain products? Even it's got the time, how much you looked at it, the average time of like visibility, how much it was kind of interacted with. If I pick up this one down here, it's instantly gone to another total pickup. Also, pe people when they pass by, you know, yeah. you can you can do posture tracking, so you can, so you can really see, you know, if, if they have a chance to look at something at a visual content or at a, okay. the merchandise or so. And these are all things you can do with sensors nowadays. But we're talking about here ISE. We're seeing so many things for the future, but they're already here. Absolutely. This is the present. This is what we're and living that's with. That's why the pandemic was so bad. You know, after two years, you know, people could, didn't have any chance to look at it. It's here. It's, you can buy it. You can use it immediately. As we walk. <laughs> On Monday, ISC 2022 hosted the Smart Building Conference. During the day, I caught up with some of the key speakers. Okay, Matthew, we'll start with you, the Smart Buildings Conference. I think we need to establish what a smart building is. Absolutely. It's when you put a bunch of technology into a building so that it can do something for sustainability, for how you use your space, and maybe some stuff for people as well. We're seeing greater proliferation of all sorts of digital services, sensors, technologies that we might wear, have embedded, and our buildings are the playground in which we're going to see so much more cool technology. Can you describe how our lives will be when we eventually all live in a smart building? I think the building will probably know who we are when we arrive. We'll get rid of our access badges. You know, why carry a picture of your face when you could just use your face? It will know the floor we're going to. It will know some things about how we like our temperatures. It will be able to suggest somebody cool that we might want to meet so that we can come up with something that's interesting and innovative, all whilst balancing how we're using energy towards our net zero goals. I think the ideas that we could have are yet to be invented. Thank you. I'm going to move on to you, Mornay. We've heard about how our lives are going to be when we all eventually live in those smart buildings. You're all about connectivity. Can you explain a bit further? Yeah, we, uh, I'm with ComSoap Connectivity. We are a, a connectivity provider making fiber optic, copper cable, wireless, wireless networks. So, and, and we think it's, it's not just important to build more, but we need to build it smarter too. We need to look at sustainability, how can we converge some of these networks to help build a platform of connectivity and then layer all these new technologies on top of that? Today, we're not doing very well with this, in, not our company, but in general. And that's why we're at these kind of shows promoting this as a network. Um, we're at an IoT show. They talk about 30 billion IoT devices online today. That's supposed to double within the next two years. What are we going to do with 70 billion batteries that needs to be replaced in two or five years from now? So we need to help with the sustainability issue of this. Can we do pow power over ethernet to this and basically eliminate some of the batteries and build a platform that's a converged platform? Can we use, for example, Wi-Fi and drive IoT traffic over Wi-Fi? So combining multiple different networks to deliver the end results and the, the digital experience for our users. So you've got an awful lot of work to do. Oh, yes, yes. But it's exciting work. It's, uh, I think we're moving past this stage now of connecting stuff just for connecting, bringing lots of digital uh, lakes, data reservoirs, AI twins, all that's coming. And now we're moving into the next phase, which is really about services, enabling brand new services that nobody even thought about. 
uh, that user experience. You walk in, you know where your desk is, the room sets to the right temperatures, and people are looking for that. You can do it at home. Why can't you do it in the office? Thank you very much, both of you, for talking to me. You're watching Rise Live, the official TV channel of ISC 2022. We're here at the Gran Via Fiera de Barcelona. ISC showcases cutting edge solutions for both the commercial and residential markets. Also here is IoT Solutions World Congress. Each show's visitors can access both exhibition areas at no extra cost, while delegates to the ISC conference get a 50% discount to the IoT SWC Congress program. Rosie Tapner spoke to show director Roger Boo about the future of the industry and the growing challenges facing our planet. So what does it mean for you to be showcasing here and teaming up with something as big as ISE? Yeah, for me, uh, being here showcasing with ISE, it's a great opportunity for the IoT Solutions World Congress. I think that uh, both are, the events are very synergic and we add value to each other. So I think it's, it's going to be great. It's been a very tricky few years for the industry and you're quoted saying that the future of the industry is ours to build. What are you most excited for in the next few years? Well, uh, the industry has been struggling for two years, uh, the events industry, but uh, the digitalizing of companies uh, has been shown as more important than ever uh, during the pandemic. So I think that events like ISE and IoT Solutions World Congress are going to be stronger in the future because all the companies know the importance of digitalization. So talking of the future, you know, challenges facing our planet are really growing at the moment. What kind of game-changing solutions can we expect to see here at the Congress? We've got uh, amazing, um, amazing speakers talking about the um, game-changing solutions. The industries of the future obviously has to be more human and more sustainable. So these are uh, challenges that we all have in the society. And this is uh, why these technologies are working for on, on, this, on this path. ISC 2022 has teamed up with Barcelona-based Flax Studio to create a spectacular projection mapping show at the Plaza de España. The projection mapping runs on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at 9 o'clock each evening. It is a must-see event. This is all the hashtags that we have uh, recovered from the social media, asking the people to say their hopes their wishes for the future. Technology is nothing without humans. We all together as an industry, we do big things and technology helps us to do these big things from something human to technology. It all started with the uh, poem of uh, Maya Angelou, I write, no matter what, how big is the challenge, uh, we will rise, we will rise again, we will meet again, we will be uh, together again and we have to some, do something meaningful for the industry of audiovisual. So that's why we are doing the show. We had two months to do it, and we are very satisfied. The future of the Maxim experience will be uh, something that we don't know about. But now this is a standard in the, in the industry. Uh, there's a lot of artists in the world that are coming to the ISC uh, to see how is the lat latest technology and we will have the honor of uh, having here in Barcelona. I'm Nadira Tudor and you're watching Rise Live, the official TV channel of ISC 2022. You can catch up with all our videos on the ISC digital website at digital.isceurope.org. Watch every video individually in your own time and follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. We are live at 3 every day of the show.